Okay, so the long-awaited and recently much-rumored Llama 2 has finally come out from Meta AI, and it looks really cool. So uh, in this video, I'm going to go through uh, a bit about the model. We'll look at paper that they've released with it. One of the cool things that Meta AI has actually done is release a proper paper and not just some very vague technical report like some of the other big companies like OpenAI and Google have done for certain models. Meta AI has actually given a lot of details about the pre-training, the fine-tuning of this set of models that have come out and how they've actually done it, and then also compared them to some of the biggest models that are out there now. So we have three base models that have been released, Llama 2 7 billion, Llama 2 13 billion, Llama 2 70 billion. We've also got a series of chat models that have been released. So these are fine-tuned versions from the base model, fine-tuned for specific chat, and probably fine-tuned in a way that it's much better than a lot of the other fine-tuned models that we've seen out there, which I'll go through for this. So there was supposed to be a Llama 2 34 billion model, which hasn't been released. I'll talk about that a little bit when we go into the paper and go through this. But for now, if you're interested to get your hands on these models, you will have to sign up for them. These are actually models that you can use for commercial use, but you will need to opt in to do that. And to do that, you'll basically need to come here, fill out your details, and agree to their license. And on the whole, the license is actually, I think, pretty fair. If you're a organization that has more than 700 million users, you are not allowed to use this. So my guess is that's pretty broadly aimed at TikTok and maybe some of the other social media companies. But even then, a lot of the other social media companies like Twitter, et cetera, would be under the 700 million user amount. So they could have made that a lot lower and still not have affected the majority of startups and other companies and stuff. But that's one thing that they've done. So uh, a little bit about the, the sort of TLDR of the models. So Meta AI has basically released the models, model code. They've also released Hugging Face versions of the models. So to download the Hugging Face versions of them, you will also need to opt in here to the Meta AI to basically get your name and your email whitelisted so that Hugging Face can actually allow you to download the models there. And I do wonder, are they going to crack down on people doing downloading 4-bit versions of these or other alterations to these over time. Let's see. So just quick looking at the TLDR of this, I've talked about already, there's a 7 billion, a 13 billion, a 70 billion. Each of these models is trained on 2 trillion tokens, which is 40% more than Llama 1. It's actually more for the 7 and the 13. I think that Llama 1, 7 and 13 were only trained on 1 trillion tokens. So whereas the 70 or the 65 billion last time was trained on 1.5 trillion tokens. So that alone already has improved them. Not only with that, the context length has been extended and trained from scratch for the, the 4,096 context length. So if you remember back to Llama 1, we had a 2,000 token context length there. My guess is that you will see this, the context length be extended through a variety of the techniques that people have been using to extend MPT out to 8,000 tokens. A lot of those kind of tricks will also work with these models. But what Meta AI has chosen to do is actually train a model from scratch that has the 4,000 context length. So this is sort of before any fine tuning. Like I said, they've done a chat fine tuning for this. So for that, they've fine tuned, they've done SFT or supervised fine tuning on over 100,000 different examples. And they've also used RLHF in there for over a million preferences for this. So if we come and look at some of the benchmarks that they've released here, we can see in this particular example of benchmarks, they're comparing to some of the other open source models. So you've got your Falcon 40B, which lots of people seem to think was really cool, your MPT 30B. MPT7, etc. And you'll see that you know, we've got the, the two new smaller Llama models and the big one, and then the old Llama 65 billion here. So some of these scores are pretty interesting. 
First look at MMLU is one of the, the benchmarks that people use a lot to determine the quality of a model. Uh, and you can see here that basically the Llama 270 is well above the Falcon uh, models, well above the MPT-30B. And even the Llama smaller models are basically, you can see the 13 billion model is rivaling the Falcon 40B model for this, which is pr pretty amazing that they've managed to basically get something that's one third the size, and it's getting up there with a similar score to the Falcon 40B. Models such as the MPT-7 and the MPT-30, which were certainly good models when they came out and still probably very useful models, really kind of dwarfed by these new scores. When you look at even the 7 billion, you're getting to the point where you're getting an increase in MMLU here, which is almost virtually on double what the MPT-7 was getting and the Falcon 7 were getting here. So it means that this Llama 2 7 billion model is probably going to be a very powerful model for fine tuning for a variety of different tasks. Now, one of the things that gets me really excited about this is the whole idea of reasoning. You've probably seen in a lot of my videos that I've done, given it reasoning challenges for different models. And a lot of those reasoning challenges come from the GSM 8K data set. So this is basically grade school math questions that are written out in word form, and it needs to work these out. So this is what I use a lot for testing reasoning, testing the PAL with this kind of thing. And you can see that generally the small open source models have been pretty useless for this, right? They really haven't been that good at it. The bigger ones have started to be, I've generally said that around 30 billion is where the reasoning starts to take off for this. And you can see this as evidenced by the MPT 30 billion. And one of the reasons why I wasn't a fan of the Falcon 40B is that you can see that the reasoning with that, it's not hugely more for all those extra parameters. You're not getting a lot more in reasoning. If we look at these, we can see that the Llama 2 7 billion is already on par with the 30 billion from MPT. And the 13 billion is already way beyond scoring almost around 50% higher than the Falcon 40B. Let alone we look at the actual 70 billion and we can see that this score is really high. Now, this score, just to give you a sort of rough idea, is still a long way from GPT-4. So don't buy into thinking that this is like a, a better model than GPT-4 or a replacement model for GPT-4. No, the GSM 8K score for GPT for memory is around 92. So it's a lot better than this. But this is a score that, you know, is getting you up closer in the sort of GPT 3.5 territory. Unfortunately, the, the scores for uh, human eval, which is you know doing a lot of the coding stuff, are not great. It does seem that the, the model hasn't been trained much on or, or hasn't been trained to do coding tasks looking at this, but it's certainly one of the areas that perhaps we're going to see people bring out fine-tuned versions of the model going forward for this kind of thing. So as a final TLDR, I would say that many of the features of this model are going to be very close to on par with chat GPT turbo models. Still a long way away from the GPT-4 models. I need to look at some more comparisons for the Claude model and see, okay, you know, how well this stacks up against that. It's probably not a direct replacement for the 3.5 turbo model, but it's certainly the closest we've got in an open source model that you can use commercially for this. So let's just jump into the paper and have a look at, you know, some of the things that have, have enabled these models to happen. So like I mentioned before, Meta AI has actually released a proper paper for this, basically talking about their sort of methodology of how they created these models and how they fine-tuned it for the fine-tuned versions as well here. One of the interesting things is that Jan LeCun is not one of the authors of this paper from what I can see. So I don't know if this means it's done by a different group in Meta AI or he just felt that his contribution wasn't enough to put his name on it. I find that a little bit interesting that he wasn't the sort of one of the main people behind it. We can see going through the paper, They've basically released a, a number of models between 7 billion and 70 billion parameters. And they've also released the Llama 2 chat models in here for this. So 
There's a whole bunch of uh, information in here about the pre-training, about the fine tuning, a, a very large amount of information about the safety and going through this. And then they've got a whole appendix with more additional details for all the different things, as well as a model card. So one of the first things that they show is this comparison, which is very similar to the LM SIST, LLM leaderboard comparisons that we've seen people doing both in their papers for, for Kuna and some of the other ones. And also this has now become a, a standard, I think, that like Open Assistant used it to basically compare models. So what they basically do is do two outputs of a model, two outputs, one from each model. They basically then show it to so someone and the person picks the winner. And so here we can see the blue is where Llama 2 was the winner. We can see where they tied. So if people say that they tied, and then we can see that, you know, where they lost there. So if we look at the example, the first one, it's comparing to ChatGPT 0301 model, which I think may have just been retired. This one or it's always going to be retired soon. But this is pretty amazing. So more often than not, people picked the Llama 2 70 billion model to be better than the chat GPT model. You can see that almost 36% of the time people pick this and 32.5% of the time people pick the chat GPT. And then 30, you know, 1% of the time people basically picked it that it was a tie. So it does show that the outputs of the Llama 2 chat model pretty much on par for a lot of things to chat GPT here. So we don't know, for example, like what percentage of them was asking it to do some code or what sort of things. My guess is that they could be certain things where that ChatGP shines better from this. When they compared it to Palm Bison model, we can see, and I presume this is a Palm Bison in chat model, or maybe it's the base model that I'm not sure. It could be the base model. In that case, I wouldn't be surprised that this is people are going to pick this 53% of the time for this. Compared to the Falcon 40B chat instruct model, this one wasn't even close, right? People chose Llama 2 way more than they chose the Falcon model to be the winner. And then some of the other interesting sort of models that have come out, the Vicuna models that we can see here that, you know, probably the, the 33 billion uh, Vicuna model, which is definitely a good model. You know, this is able to basically do well. Now here we can see that they're comparing the Llama to 34 billion. These models didn't get released. So I'll explain why in a little bit, but these models were so far, we're hoping that they will be released in the future, but so far they've been deemed to be not safe enough for release for whatever reason there. And then finally, we can see that even when you compare the Llama 2 7 billion against the MPT 7 billion, Llama 2 is coming out quite often on top for that particular one. So we can see in the paper, they talk about releasing the following models to general public for research and commercial use. And they also mention that they're delaying the release of the 34 billion due to lack of time to sufficiently red team this. So red teaming is basically working out how to prompt the model to get it to give you outputs that would be considered dangerous, malicious, offensive, that kind of thing. And amazingly with the 7, 13 and 30 models, with the chat models, they've been able to reduce the amount of, let's call it bad outputs that they were trying to reduce. So malicious or offensive outputs or unsafe outputs for that. And we'll look at that in a minute of like how they're actually doing that. First off, if we look at the training for these, we can see that they've decided to basically train on 2 trillion tokens. They've also done some really interesting things in here of where they've chosen certain sources of data. So the majority of the data is coming from the internet, but they've chosen certain sources of data to not pay as much attention to. So I'm not sure what those sources are, where they basically make the point that we made an effort to remove data from sites known to contain high volume of personal information and private individuals. So I'm not sure if that's Reddit or which sites that they were. The other thing that was interesting was that they also upsample the most factual sources in an effort to increase knowledge and dampen hallucinations. 
So you could imagine that Wikipedia is probably being more upsampled than perhaps Reddit conspiracy theories or that kind of thing. In the goal of trying to reduce hallucinations, this is in the base models that they're doing the pre-training in. Okay, so this is the graph from their pre-training of the different models. We can see that over time they've been trained on 2,000 million tokens or 2 billion tokens. And we can see the loss curves. Now, the thing that amazes me here looking at this is that they're still going down. So it does bring up the idea of, okay, if you add in another trillion tokens, does this mean the loss is going to go down proportionally? According to the GPT-4 paper, they would say probably yes. They showed that, like, that they could actually predict a lot of this sort of thing very early on by looking at the rates that they've done here. So this is just interesting to see the actual loss curves of the training going on. And we can see that the clearly the 70 billion parameter model is doing very nicely here. For the training time, they've got information in the paper of how long it took to train each of the models in here and also the power consumption for those. The next thing I'll jump forward to is basically looking at how they did the fine tuning. So there are a lot of details in the paper for doing fine tuning both doing supervised fine-tuning where they're making data sets and then also doing RLHF for doing this. So you can see that they've got the pre-training here and then they're doing a supervised fine-tuning to create this model. Then they're basically using RLHF and they're doing RLHF in two ways of where they're sampling from it and what they actually do to reduce some of the problems that people have with RLHF in the past was that if you're just going for safety and you've just got one reward model, that that probably skews the results in a certain way. So they've actually gone for two reward models here, one for safety and one for helpfulness, and basically had people scoring both of these, and which created two reward models. Now, it would be great if they actually release these reward models in the future, because we would be able to use them ourselves to basically fine-tune data sets and use it for doing RLHF ourselves. So they've basically got these reward models that they've built. They're then using PPO to do the RLHF and basically just going through this, you know, in a continuous loop. And it does seem that the scale that they've done it at has had a big effect in creating the chat models to outperform things like we saw with the chat gpt 3.5 and the other open source chat and instruct models for doing this another interesting thing that they talk about in the paper is the whole idea of getting third party people to do your labeling and annotation and data creation and that how even when they use different vendors really at the end of the day they needed to look at them themselves and go through looking at it themselves and see was this consistent with what, what they actually wanted in here so this is just some interesting observations, I thought, from talking about the quality of data that they wanted to do, especially when we're looking at now being able to use things like Lima and some of the other papers that have come along for training things with small amounts of very curated data. This kind of reinforces some of those ideas, I feel, there. They've got here about the fine-tuning details. They basically were using cosine annealing. They've got their learning rate there with a weight decay. And you can see that they're doing the sequences of 4096 tokens. And they only fine tune for two epochs for this supervised fine tuning section, which I thought was kind of interesting. So, so one of the last things that I wanted to go through is just looking at this, talking about the RLHF as well here. And they're comparing to other things that people have done with RLHF and with the sort of reward modeling here and preferences. And I think this is really interesting in that most or certainly a lot of these kind of things have generally been done on sort of one input from a human and one generation and then scoring that. And we can see that by the average turns per dialogue. Now, the anthropic stuff took that out to three turns per dialogue and, you know, and did that for a decent amount of data, you've got 160,000 examples there. We can see from Meta that they've actually gone out to almost four. And really what they're doing in here is trying to get longer dialogues where people can look at the entire dialogue 
and score that and the create the reward model that way rather than just one input one output and scoring it off that so i think this is really interesting this whole sort of safety and helpfulness and the fact that they went for longer not only just longer in turns but longer in tokens here and my guess is that is what's showing so well in the model when you look at this so if you want to try it out yourself here is basically a hugging face spaces which you can just try out the 70 billion model in some future videos we'll go through some of the code for this and i'll also show you how to do some of the fine tuning with these models because really i think any data set that you've had ready and i know certainly this for our company is that we've been making data sets getting ready just for this to come out so that we can basically have things ready to go and this is something i think that once you've got your data set you really want to be fine-tuning this and using these models as quickly as you can because they're probably the best open source models out there but if you want to have a play with it come in here and you can test out the llama 270 b chat model here Unfortunately, it looks like they've limited the number of tokens out. So when I ask it the Sam Altman question, it starts going really good. I'm guessing they've limited it to 56 tokens or something. And it's basically just starting to cut off as it's getting uh, going here. Certainly the results that we're seeing here are very good for these things. For those of you who complain about censorship, that kind of thing, you will find that, yes, there are certain things that you will ask this when I was playing with this earlier on, that it will give you results where it's perhaps not as cooperative as what you wanted. And that's exactly why you should be able to fine tune it for your particular needs. And that's exactly what you are allowed to do for that. So hopefully this gives you a, a sort of understanding of these Llama 2 models that have just come out from Meta AI. I will certainly be making a lot of videos uh, about them going forward and we can look at the different sizes and using them for different tasks and trying out some of the different reasoning things on them as, as we go along. But this is, I'm conscious this is quite a long video already. And I just wanted to go through some of the key details about the release, you know, about the training and the paper, you know, from the paper itself. And in some of the next videos, we'll look at using these for a variety of different tasks and, you know, how to basically incorporate training your own models, using your own models using them with Langchain, using them with things like that, using them for information retrieval, that kind of thing going forward here. Anyway, I think that's probably a good place to leave it with this video. As always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, you want to see some more videos about Llama 2, please subscribe. And uh, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.